Okay, in the last video we discussed uh, the basic voxel tools. Now before we move on to the other tools like adjustments and objects, I'm going to go over a few other general features of 3D Coat. Uh, the first of which are going to be brush options. Now when you're sculpting with something like say my build brush, there are a lot of different ways to use the build brush in order to get different effects. As you see if I pick a square alpha right here, I can brush and it builds up in a fairly predictable manner. Now the alphas, for anyone who's familiar with sculpting software, they're pretty self-explanatory, but they just change the shape of the brush, the shape that you lay onto your object. So if I have a square, then you see I draw, let me decrease my strength a little bit. You see that I'm drawing in fairly angular patterns. If I pick an alpha like, say, one of these, and you can see the difference pretty clearly. Now instead of laying down squares or smooth strokes, now instead I am putting in these cracks. But the alphas by themselves aren't enough to get certain effects. As you see, if I draw with this square alpha, I get a very smooth, consistent line. Whereas if I go in with one of these more cracked alphas, they're kind of getting laid down one at a time. And these are controlled by something called the brush options. And as you'll see here, next to alphas, you should have a tab called brush options. If you don't see it, you can go to windows, pop-ups, and you can find brush options. So if I go to those brush options, let me let me pick a different alpha, a new one we haven't touched yet. Let's go with this one, this hemispherical one. So these control how the brush is laid down. Actually to explain the first few I'm going to use a non-symmetrical one like say this one. So the very first option here is brush rotation and as you'll See, just remember how the brush pattern is oriented. If I change the rotation to be, say, 90, you'll see now it's facing a different way. So if you need your brush to, if you need your alpha to be laid out, down in a very specific direction, this is how you can do that. The next few are um, mainly for your tablet option. So zero pressure radius would be the absolute minimum that uh, the, the minimum radius the brush can have when you're applying the minimum amount of pressure on your tablet. And the depth modulator sort of multiplies the depth you would get with your tablet. Now the next few are very important for randomization. So rotation amplitude is how much the brush will randomly rotate as you move. So if you see back at my square alpha there is no rotation amplitude. That means that as I wrote, as I brush, the rotation of the alpha is not changing. Whereas, I'll use the same alpha. If I increase that to 360, then you see my stroke is a lot noisier. This will be much more obvious with an alpha like this. But you see, the alpha is getting applied at a random rotation as I move the brush. That's rotation amplitude. Radius variation is again pretty self-explanatory. It just randomizes the radius. So this will be independent of your stroke mode. So if I really bring that up, then it's a little hard to see. Let me just hopefully this will make it a little bit easier. But there you can see that I got some that are really, really narrow and some that are quite large. Let me bring that back down. And the same thing applies to depth variation, which will just modulate the strength of it, again, independent of your tablet settings or whichever stroke mode you're using. And then the jitter options are effectively the exact same as this. If I increase my jitter position, then as you see, my cursor is jittering, 
quite violently. So if you're trying to apply some random noise or some random details to your model, this would be a good way to do that. So if I go here to this sort of spray-like alpha, and I give it a lot of jitter, maximize its rotation amplitude, and maybe increase its depth variation, if I decrease the strength, and you see it's a very quick way to be able to spray on a lot of details very quickly over a large area. Now these next few have to do with the paint room, which we're not going to talk about for a while, but we will get to them. But these are the same sort of randomization properties you have for these, but the hue, brightness, saturation, those deal with paint colors. Now the other few that are important to know are rotate along stroke which will rotate your alpha based on what direction you're moving your brush in. So if I go back to the square alpha, you'll see that that's been turned on. If I turn my rotation amplitude to zero, then you'll see that the edge of the stroke follows the direction that I moved my brush. Let's make this a bit more obvious. Just to show you the difference, I'll use this sort of stitch looking alpha. Let me bring the brush rotation back down to zero. And if I turn rotate along stroke off, then no matter what direction I'm moving my brush, they'll all be facing the same way. If I turn it on, then the alpha will move or will rotate to follow the direction that I was moving my cursor at the time. So with this I can get some good looking cloth stitches. Now last one to know, especially for something an effect like this would be the spacing. If I turn off use spacing, then you see that the line that I draw is constant, it's unbroken. I turn on use spacing, then I can change the distance in between each placement of the alpha. So I can make it very narrow to the point where there's a little bit of breakup between them, but not a whole lot. Or I can increase it so that you can see the alpha broken up individually. Increase that up a little bit more. And there I can see the alpha as a unique shape, one after the other. So these will apply, these will work on any alpha. A lot of them do have defaults that you may want to go and look into. And a lot of the, your brushes can be made significantly stronger using these brush options. Now it's worth mentioning that these will only work with um, the stroke modes that are dependent on a tablet or a mouse. If you're using the uh, shapes, they won't work very well. But those are how you can make more use out of your alphas. Now before we go into the adjustment and the objects tools, I'm going to go over in the next video over symmetry.